Our final practice video is going to be going over the procedures on how to run a two-way independent ANOVA as well as look at the interpretations of different values that we get in the output in SPSS. For our research scenario, a researcher wants to determine the effect of frequency of practice on archery score for novice and intermediate archers. Two groups of archers were randomly sampled based on experience level, divided as novice and intermediate. Participants in each group were then assigned to a certain practice schedule, one day a week, two days per week, or three days per week. Each practice session was one hour in duration. Archery scores out of 360 points were measured at the end of the intervention. So we have all of this data outlined in our spreadsheet, and we are going to organize the data such that it will fit a two-way independent ANOVA in SPSS, interpret the results, and then we'll create a bar graph that represents the mean differences between skill levels within practice schedules. And we'll also add error bars to the means that we plot. If you would like to reference any of the procedures that I am running through, you can feel free to refer to the uh, Part 2B PowerPoint for Module 7. So let's go over to our spreadsheet. We can see we've got all of our novice participants listed with each of the three practice schedules, and then we have the same thing for the intermediate. Now, again, when we put our data into SPSS, we have to think about how SPSS is going to read the data, such that each row is going to represent a single subject. Since we have technically six groups um, with all different subjects, we need to sort our data based on skill level and um, the practice schedule that people were assigned. So I'll make one column for skill level, one column for practice schedule, and then the variable that we are actually measuring in here is the archery score. So that's the dependent variable of interest the units are in points as noted in our description. So under skill level we are going to have data labels either one or two indicating if we have a novice measurement or an intermediate measurement and then under the practice schedule we're going to have data values one through three representing how many times a week a person practiced. So this first column is representing novice individuals who practice one day a week. So I copy and paste their scores into my archery score column. And I indicate that these data points belong to novice individuals by assigning them a skill level of one. And then I indicate that they practiced one day a week by giving them a practice schedule label of one. We would then do the same thing for our three day a week people. They end up with the same novice assignment, but instead of one day a week, they practice three days a week, so they get a data label of two. Then we have novice who practiced five days a week. So they'll get a data label of one for skill level and three for practice schedule. And then we can paste in our intermediate so they get a data label of two. One day a week gets a data label of one. Do the same thing for three days a week. Data label two for skill level and two for practice schedule. And then our last category, intermediate five days a week. And they get 
a data label of two for skill level and three for practice schedule. So now that we have all of our data lined up with people appropriately categorized in their skill levels and practice schedules, and each row is a different subject with an individual archery score. We are ready to copy our data into SPSS. And then we can format our data based on um, the values that we know we have. So skill level and practice schedule are nominal with archery score as scale. Our skill level um, one represents novice and two represented intermediate. For our practice schedules, a value of one represented practicing one day per week. Two was practiced three days per week and three was practiced five days per week. Okay, once we have our data set up accordingly, we can uh, run our general linear model. So we can go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and Univariate. Our dependent variable is archery score. And our fixed factors are the skill level and practice schedule. Here we can set up our estimated marginal means, which is our uh, post hoc tests or pairwise comparisons. So we'll move all of our factors, skill level, practice schedule, and the interaction between those two variables into this box that says display means for. We will check the compare main effects and use a Bonferroni adjustment. So we then can click continue. And then under our options, we'll want to check descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity test. Again, homogeneity test will make sure that Levine's test is inserted into our output so that we can see if we have met our assumption of homogeneity of variance. Effect size will give us a partial eta squared effect size. So this is different from the omega squared effect size, but interpreted the same way. And our descriptive statistics will give us our means, standard deviations, along with some other calculations as well. Once we have this all set up, we can go to this, this paste icon that will bring up a syntax window. Now, in the syntax window, you can see there are three rows that have EM means. One of them is going to give us the pairwise comparisons for skill level. One will give us the pairwise comparisons for practice schedule. And the other one is set up to give us the pairwise comparisons for the interaction effect. Now you'll see that compare and um, Bonferroni are added to the other two main effects, but they're not added onto our uh, interaction. So we have to add them ourselves. If you start typing compare, you'll see there's an option to add it in uh, the drop down list. You're then going to put a set of parentheses. And then you'll choose one of the independent variables. I'll choose skill level first. And then you'll type ADJ, parentheses, Bonferroni, whoops, and then enter down. We'll copy this row and paste it in. And then instead of skill level for the second comparison, we're going to add in practice schedule. Okay. It's important you use the drop down menus because they're set to automate the code so that your variable names match exactly what is in your data set. If they do not match, then uh, the 
output will show that you have an error because there will have been an unidentified variable. So once we have all of this set up, we then can go to the Run tab and hit All. And then you can see we have this lovely long output. If you click on the log, this will show you what the syntax is um, that you just edited. So you should be able to see that you have four sets of estimated marginal means, one for skill level, one for practice level, and two interactions. The first interaction compares skill level that one is going to show you the differences between skill levels, so between novice and intermediate, within uh, the practice schedules. The second compare practice schedule um, estimated marginal means is going to give us the differences between practice schedules within a given skill level. So we can Double check those in the pairwise comparisons area, which is down in this lower portion of the output. So kind of keep that as a side note for now, um, and we'll just go ahead and scroll through uh, our output just to highlight the different aspects that we have in here. I'll get rid of my notes because I don't need those. The first table that you'll see is the between subject factors. So these are the independent variables that you input into SPSS. It'll note what you identified the variable as, how many levels it has, or the, the data labels that you assign to given groupings, and then how many uh, people were in the sample for each of those conditions. Your descriptive statistics will give you your mean standard deviation and sample size. Levine's test is for our homogeneity of variance assumption. Again, we read this top row based on the mean, and we can see that our p-value is larger than 0.05. So that would indicate that we need to read the ANOVA table for the main effect um, of our uh, ANOVA. So in our test of between subject effects, you can see we have three main effects here. One for skill level, which we can see is significant with a p-value less than 0 0.001. We have another uh, row for practice schedule, which is also significant with the p-value less than 0 0.001. And then we also have our interaction effect also listed as significant. So because all of our main effect p-values are significant, that indicates that there is at least one uh, significant difference within the pairwise comparisons that we can have for each of these uh, main effects. Now, for skill level, there were only two levels. Um, and so what this p-value is representing is that there is a significant difference between novice and intermediate. Technically speaking, when you only have two levels of a given variable, you don't need to look at pairwise comparisons because it will just give you a redundant result with what's given in the ANOVA table. This should make sense because a comparison between Two means is a t-test, and that's exactly what pairwise comparisons do, is it's a t-test between different means for pairs of groupings that you have within a certain variable. So we can double check our p-value for skill level, but again, it'll be redundant with what's in this table because we're comparing the same means together. So a p-value less than 0 0.001, which is less than 0 0.05, um, would indicate that skill level has a significant effect on archery score. If we scroll down to the pairwise comparisons for our practice schedule, we can see the different pairs um, of different practice schedules. 
and the p-values associated with each of those practice schedules or with each of those pairs. Um, for this output, we end up having uh, significant pairs for all of our comparisons. Remember that these are repeated. So really what we're reporting is that one day is significantly different from three days a week and significantly different from five days a week. And three days a week is significantly different from five days a week. Okay, because three and one is repeated um, here and here, right? And then one and five has been repeated here as well as here. So we only need to report the pairs one time. We can then scroll down to our first interaction effect, right? Skill level times practice schedule. And if you recall from our syntax up here, we said we were comparing skill levels within um, our uh, practice schedules. So that should be reflected in our pairwise comparisons, right? comparing skill levels or novice to intermediate within the practice schedules. So we can see again here that all of our pairs are significant, meaning that novice and intermediate levels are significantly different from each other or um, skill level has a significant effect on archery score for any type of practice schedule. The last thing we can look at um, for our p-values for significant differences in our pairwise comparisons <laughs> would be looking at practice schedule or comparisons of practice schedule within skill level. So in this one, all of our p-values are significant except for the comparison between one and three days a week for intermediate um, individuals. So a way that we could report this is that um, there are significant differences between all practice schedules in novice performers and there are significant differences in all practice or all pairs of practice schedules for intermediate um, archers with the exception of the difference between uh, three days a week and five days a week. Because okay, three days a week and five days a week is the p-value that is um, larger than 0.05. Our comparison between one and three days a week and our comparison between, uh, where is it, one and five days a week, both of those are significant. Um, or significantly different from each other. And I think I misspoke the first time I read that across. So the only insignificant difference in our pairwise comparisons here is three and five days a week for intermediate. Okay. Uh, from our output, we can also look at our effect sizes. So if we scroll back up to our between subjects effects table. For individual uh, independent variables, skill level and practice level, we can get our partial eta squared from the between subjects effects table. So that would give us um, a partial eta squared of 0.599 and 0.491 for skill level and practice schedule respectively. Both of those would be considered large effect sizes. Um, so you can kind of formulate your interpretation uh, based off of those values. For the interaction effects, we have to go off of the univariate tests that are within each of these interaction areas. So I'm going to go to the first interaction effect where we were looking at the differences between skill level within practice schedules. And the univariate test table that's included in that section 
will tell me what the effect size is between the skill levels within each of the practice schedules. Okay, so for the most part, we can see that we've got relatively large effect sizes. Um, there might be a moderate to large effect size for the five days a week. Uh, grouping um, or comparison between novice and intermediate, uh, but I would probably round this closer to a large effect size um, just because of how close it is to 0.14. And then lastly for our final comparison that we did between practice schedules within skill level, we can see that we also have relatively large differences or large effect sizes um, for that final interaction effect. The last thing I wanted to show you in this section is how to make a bar graph that represents the differences between the means for our various groupings. So I've given you guys kind of a table template to work with um, and this should help kind of organize your thoughts a little bit. Um, I'm going to calculate my means and standard deviations in Excel because I can do it pretty quickly. If you want to copy and paste your means and standard deviations from your output, that's okay. Just make sure that you're copying and pasting the correct values in the correct cell because the way that I organize these tables is for ease of graphing in Excel and not necessarily the same order that the values are uh, listed in the output. So I have a table for averages and I'm gonna calculate um, my averages. This first cell is for novice uh, archers practicing one day a week. So that would be this column of data here. The next row underneath that is going to be the average of intermediate archers practicing at one day a week. And then since my practice levels move to the right, I can copy my uh, functions to the right and they should copy over to Novice three days, novice five days, intermediate three day, intermediate five day, respectively. I'll do the same thing for my standard deviations. And then I'll adjust my decimal places. From here, I can graph my averages. Make sure that you highlight your data labels. And we'll insert those into a bar graph. We can add our axes labels. And we can also add our error bars. So actually, before I add the error bars, I do want to point out there are different ways that you can organize your graph. Before you label, um, double check the wording on the um, instructions. So for this particular example, I asked you guys to graph the differences between skill levels within practice schedules. So differences between skill levels will be um, the bar differences, right? So novice are blue, intermediate are orange. Okay, so those are the mean differences in archery score between our skill levels within each of the different practice schedules down at the bottom. If I had asked you, let's look at the mean differences between practice schedules within skill level, and you input your data this way, you could easily just click on this uh, switch columns button 
and it will then give you the differences between um, your uh, practice schedules, right? One being, or the blue being one day a week, orange is three day a week, and uh, gray is five days a week within your skill levels of novice and intermediate. Okay, so it's a very quick and easy switch, but I would recommend doing that before you add your data labels because the data labels will not change uh, based on this switching function. So make sure you add in your axis labels and your chart title. We'll also add in some error bars and we'll add them to our novice individuals first, in which the error should be standard deviation for novice for both positive and negative. And then we can add error bars to our intermediate archers in which the standard deviation will go into the positive and negative error as well. Okay. And then once you're done formatting your graph, you can just copy and paste it into your answer sheet and that will conclude our procedures for practice three.